Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devane County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 138. This is the Friday, March 31st, 2023 edition of Library Connections. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. In the sequel to It Ends With Us, Lily deals with her jealous ex-husband as she reconnects with her first boyfriend. At number two, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. A scientist and single mother living in California in the 1960s becomes a star on a TV cooking show. At number three, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. A fictional oral history charting the rise and fall of a 70s rock and roll band. At number four, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, a battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. And at number five, Countdown by James Patterson and Brenda Dubois, a botched field operation and a terrorist plot endanger Amy Cornwall and her family. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for the week. At number one, Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond. The Pulitzer Prize winning author of Evicted examines the ways in which affluent Americans keep poor people poor. At number two, Saved by Benjamin Hall. The Fox News journalist gives his account of the injuries he sustained from a Russian attack while covering the war in Ukraine. At number three, Spare by Prince Harry. The Duke of Sussex details his struggles with the royal family, loss of his mother, service in the British Army, and marriage to Meghan Markle. At number four, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How Trauma Affects the Body and Mind and Innovative Treatments for Recovery. And at number five, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. Our first recommended read for this week is the new Lisa Skodeline novel, Loyalty. This one's historical fiction. Skodeline brings 19th century Sicily alive in this historical thriller with fairy tale themes, revenge quests, and compelling heroes reminiscent of William Goldman's The Princess Bride. In the lemon groves outside Palermo, ambitious farm manager Franco plots to build his own fortune by striking deals with local barons to protect their lemon transports. His twin Roberto trains their small army, and the brothers soon lead an organization built on extortion, class resentments, and fierce outlaw loyalty. Unfortunately, Franco also solidifies their power with a dark bargain to kill an aristocrat's young illegitimate son, Dante. In deference to his conscience, instead of killing Dante, Franco has Dante abducted and imprisoned in a madhouse. Gaetano, a lawyer, becomes obsessed with finding Dante and later 
with solving a multitude of kidnappings, leaving Palmero's mothers bereft. And in Sicily's countryside, Lucia and Alfredo, made outcasts by villagers' superstitions, fight to survive in the wild. These five characters' stories collide in the wake of various disasters, and they become twisted in Franco's schemes. Every scene is a full sensory experience as Scotaline weaves lemon-scented breezes, the ocean sounds, and sun-baked stones into a timeless, tragedy-strewn story of love, power, and redemption. History fans will appreciate the novel's well-researched foundation, especially concerning the origins of the Sicilian Mafia and early mental health institutions. And that's the book list review. Our second recommended read for this week is nonfiction. It's called Outlive, The Science and Art of Longevity by Peter Atia with Bill Gifford. And if you look at the bottom there it says of the book, it says, Rethinking Medicine to Live Better Longer. And that's really tiny. That's why I'm reading it for you. This rigorous debut by Physician Itia dispenses guidance on living longer while staying healthier. He notes, The odds are overwhelming that you will die as a result of heart disease, cancer, neodegenerative disease, or type 2 diabetes. ITEA outlined strategies to stave off these four chronic diseases of aging. The author's medical philosophy emphasizes prevention over treatment, recognizes that what works for one person might not work for the next, evaluates risk versus reward versus cost on a case-by-case -case basis, and prioritizes maintaining one's health span. He strikes the delicate balance between providing scientific background and keeping his explanations accessible, as when he relates that long-distance running and biking help fend off neurodegenerative disease because they cause the body to generate a molecule that bolsters the health of brain structures implicated in storing memories. Atiyah's acknowledgement that diets aren't one-size-fits-all is a welcome departure from the overgeneralizations of similar volumes, and he provides recommendations on modulating protein, fat, and carbohydrate intake depending on one's age, sex, and activity levels. The familiar suggestions to reduce stress, eat healthier, and exercise are elevated by the depth of detail and lucid prose that Atia brings to the table. This stands a notch above other fare aimed at boosting health and longevity. And that's the book list review. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation for the week. This one's a mystery. It's called Intrigue in Istanbul by Erica Ruth Neubauer. The audio is read by Sarah Zimmerman. Set in 1926, Agatha Winter Neubauer's diverting fourth Jane Wonderly takes Jane home to Boston. There she learns that her father, a professor of history, with a specialized interest in the Ottoman Empire, to whom she was planning to introduce her fiancé, Redvers, has taken out a large bank loan and fled to Istanbul in search of an ancient artifact. That artifact being the heart of the Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Jane and Redvers embark on a voyage to Istanbul where she hopes to locate her father and ensure that he returns the money to the bank, but their task proves far from simple. We knew there was going to be a but there, didn't we? There always is. Otherwise, it's no fun. But I'm digressing. Anyway, they're going to Istanbul, and in Istanbul, 
Instead of her father, the pair encounter a host of unsavory characters. When her father's translator and confidant is killed in an elevator in their hotel, Jane realizes she could be in grave danger. The action builds to a satisfying resolution as Jane and Redvers follow clues that lead them to Budapest, Hungary. Suspenseful twists and turns more than compensate for a culprit astute readers may pinpoint early on. This fast-paced adventure-filled mystery should win Neubauer new fans. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. And on a reader's note, this is the fourth book in the Jane Wonderly Mystery series. If you'd like to start reading the series from the beginning, check out book one, Murder at the Mena House. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is a neat nonfiction title. It's called Wings of Gold, the story of the first women naval aviators by Beverly Weintraub, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. The audio is read by Sandra Murphy. Journalist and pilot Weintraub debuts with a meticulous and often infuriating chronicle of the obstacles faced by the first six women to earn their naval aviation wings in the early 1970s. Barbara Rainey, the daughter of a naval commander, was the first to qualify as a Navy jet pilot. Joellen Osland became the U.S. military's first female helicopter pilot. Rosemary Mariner was the first woman to fly a tactical jet, the first to command an aviation squadron, and one of the first to serve on a Navy warship. Even though they made it through the same pilot training course as male aviators, they were not allowed to land or take off from aircraft carriers or to fly combat missions. Weintraub exhaustively documents the battle to pass over the objections of the commanders of all four branches of the military, a 1991 bill that lifted the ban on women serving in combat. Weintraub also details the fallout from the tailhook sexual assault scandal. Aggravating details abound. Weintraub notes that in the 70s, female officer candidates had to wear skirts and heels even when marching in the snow, as does evidence of these pioneering women's bravery and determination. This is a fine-grained look at a critical battle in the fight for gender equality. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog found online at ssctech.com for weekly and monthly recommendations and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Stabenn County Library's YouTube page. Just go to youtube.com and type in Southeast Stabenn County Library to find our page. Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, we'll take a brief look at activities and events hosted by the library on and off-site for the week ahead of us. Unbelievably, this time out, that's the first full week of April, April 2nd through the 8th, 2023. This information can also be found online. Simply visit the library's website located at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see located near the top of the page. And on a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand variety, in which case, of course, please help yourself. You can register for programs through the library's website by calling the library at area code 607-936-3713 or by just dropping by. On Monday, April 3rd, we've got one program to bring to your attention from 
11 a.m. to noon, we've got Brick by Brick. This is a kids program. It's a Lego build session. It's recommended for kids ages 5 through 10, and there is no need to sign up or register. Just drop in. On Tuesday, April 4th, we've got a whole host of programs at the library. Tuesday is always our busiest program day. So kicking things off with Coffee Teen English Vocabulary from 9.15 to 10.15 a.m. This is part of our series for adult learners of English, and this is a hybrid program being held both at the library in person and online via Zoom. Then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., it's story time with Miss Sue. Miss Sue will offer an interactive story time for little ones from infants to three years of age. Then from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m., we have Coffee, Tea, and English Conversation, another hybrid program. And from 1 to 3 p.m., create your own coloring pages where you will learn how to create your own adult-level coloring pages, even if you've never drawn before. The easy step-by-step -step process will have even the non-artists creating beautiful designs by the end of the first session, with new techniques to be explored each week. Programs in this series will be held each Tuesday in April, and the series is recommended for people ages 13 and up. Moving on to our afternoon and evening programs on the 4th, from 1 to 3 p.m., we have the weekly Scrabble Club, which is now being held in the library's reading room. Then from 3 to 5 p.m., we've got Crafty Corner. This program is being held in the Mary Lou Walker Children's Room. This is a drop-in program. You drop by for a simple craft for kids to make and take home. You don't need to sign up. Just drop in. This is suggested for kids ages 3 through 10. Then from 7 to 8 p.m., we've got an LSC author talk, this time out with author Kate Beaton, best-selling cartoonist of Ducks, Two Years in the Oil Sands. This program is online only. You can either type the link you see there into your web browser to get there, or you can visit the library's website in our calendar of events and then click or tap on the LSC Author Talk at 7 p.m. on the 4th to get the link. Moving on to Wednesday, April 5th, our first program of the day is Miss Sue's Preschool Storytime. It runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. and is an interactive story time for kids ages 3 through 6. Then an all-day event, essentially, or almost all day, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's a full event, but if you've already registered, just a reminder, it's the pickup for the April Junior Chef Easter Egg Cookie Decorating. So if you've already registered for this program, drop by the library between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on the 5th to pick up your creation kit. If you haven't signed up for it, know that this is a monthly event. It's very popular, so you want to look at our calendar of events online and register your kids for the next one or subsequent ones early. Then from 1 to 3 p.m., we've got the weekly Maison, which is held here at the library. And from 6 to 8 p.m., it's the Corning Adult Writers Group, which is a hybrid program held both at the library and via Zoom. On Thursday, April 6, our first program of the day from 10 to 11.30 a.m. is the Coffee, Tea, and English Book Club. This is a hybrid program being held both at the library in person and via Zoom. Then from 2 to 3.30 p.m., we've got Creative Calligraphy with Win Yarrow, Part 1, Writing Write. This program and series is being held at the library. In this program, you will explore the art of the alphabet with traditional and contemporary techniques. Again, this is Part 1 of a three-part workshop, and registration is required. Then from 2 to 3 p.m., it's Perler Beads. This program is being held at the library, and it's a drop-in program, so just drop in with your kids anytime between 2 and 3 p.m. to create beautiful things with Perler Beads. The suggested age range is 5 to 10 years. On Friday, April 7th, we have the monthly book review with Michelle Wells. 
This is found online at Michelle's Writer's Blog, which is found at storymusing.blogspot.com. And then at 1 p.m. is the debut of the new episode of Library Connections, a weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. And here briefly are our library program's contacts. Should you have any questions about any library programs, let us know. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new episode of Library Connections. And who knows, maybe it'll be a little warmer in the community room and I'll be able to take off my hat. Have a great week.